Other than, I know that um, today was a bad day. Mm. A bad day. And um, Chris Murphy evidently was on the news. He was supposed to meet with a Sandy Hook parent. And he mentioned that the parent was him. And I'm wondering if it's John Barber's cousin. We all know John Barber. Mm -hmm. uh, John Barber's cousin had a uh, uh, kid, mm -hmm. Daniel, that was a first grader at Sandy Hook. And we, we talked about going to school to pick up our kids. And today I picked up my grandkid today. He was a first grader. So every time I walked there to pick him up, you know, who, who knows? Now, I know that I'm a survivor and Diane's a survivor. And if there is anybody else here that's comfortable with, uh, you know, mentioning it, please, if you don't want to mention it, see me afterwards or whatever. But uh, I'm originally from Chicago. And I'm going to try, I'm going to change my story because most of the people here have heard it. But I got other stories to tell. I'm originally from Chicago. I'm from a family of seven kids. Five of them were sisters. That, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. They, they trained me well, and uh, you know I, I wouldn't uh, trade them in for anything. Uh, but the oldest was Diane. And this is Diane, and I'm going to put her picture here. She was shot and murdered in Chicago on July 19, 1986. She was the head nurse midwife at Cook County Hospital, and uh, she was on her way to work, and before she went to work, she would stop in uh, to a church and, you know, pray or whatever, you know. And as she got out of the car, some guy came up and put a gun to her left temple and pulled the trigger. It was that quick. It was that little thing. She was a divorced mother of four daughters. And that happened in 1986. At the time, I was a pilot for Northwest Airlines. When I was a kid, I shot on a rifle team. So I was kind of familiar with guns, and they didn't bother me. I mean, guns were something we kind of grew up with. I wasn't a gun nut where I had all these guns. I shot 22 long rifles as a, uh, you know, in a, on a rifle team. And so, but I started to pay attention to stuff, and I started to uh, uh, think about it a little bit more and see all the stuff. Because I remember in the, what was it, the, uh, uh, must have been the late 60s, the Whitman, the University of T uh, Texas Tower shooting. I think the guy's name was Whitman that shot, what, 17 or 18 kids or something like that. So, I, and now it's becoming more and more uh, prevalent in our society. The next big thing that happened was 9-11. Um, All right, those airplanes going into the tower. Being in the aviation industry, you either knew someone or you knew someone who knew someone that was on that airplane, and that's exactly the, the, the case. So I decided that um, I was gonna go through training to carry a gun in the cockpit, and I went through training to, to, for handgun training. I was uh, trained by federal air marshals in Artesia, New Mexico, where they did all the training. So I, I learned how to uh, fire a handgun, and that's really the only two guns. I did fire a rifle and, and a handgun. And you don't need any more than that. Anybody that has more than that, I, I don't get it. But uh, anyway, and then the next big thing that happened was Sandy Hook. And who didn't cry? Who didn't cry when Sandy Hook happened? I picked up my first grader today. Those people didn't get that chance. Okay. Diane never got to see her daughters get married, her four daughters. Never got to hold her grandkids in her, hand, in her arms. So this is why I do this. Okay. Somebody mentioned Bowling for Columbine, right? You know, did you see the MSNBC special that was on the other uh -huh. week? Yeah, I, that's the first time I watched it. And I, because um, I knew when it was out and I always wanted to watch it, but I never had the time. And he mentioned that he was a marksman with the NRA. I got the identical thing, except I want to show him that this one here says sharpshooter. <laughs> okay, so I, I was a sharpshooter in the NRA by their standards at the time from the, the rifle stuff. So. You know, I do have, uh, you know, some experience. I guess you can say I was part of the NRA. I was what the NRA was all about, a gun safety and sportsman organization. It no longer is that. It's, it's, it's a lobbying arm for the gun manufacturing lobby. They have hijacked the Second Amendment. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And those of you who were at the mom's thing, this past weekend where Matt Filner spoke and he is a professor of constitutional law and he talked about the Second Amendment and they have hijacked it and have gotten their own messaging out there and we need to get it back because that Second Amendment belongs to us not to them 
you know, we are the, uh, you know, the patriots in this thing. Okay, uh, so to make a long story short, that's kind of my story in a nutshell. But why do I do this? Well, after Sandy Hook, I decided that if my government's not going to do anything, I will. So I, um, I applied for and became a fellow for Every Town for Gun Safety. And in that organization, I met a lot of people. And they said I had to be part of mom. So I came back here and married Brock, and then I talked to her, and then I got involved with some really wonderful people. And many of them are here. So I'm always impressed because I got to follow Joe up here, all right? And I go to these meetings. Every, remember the um, uh, Johnny Carson show when he had, he brought out Bob Hope and Bob Hope spoke, and then he brings out Dean Martin and Dean Martin speaks, and then he brings out George Goble. Remember George Go Goble, the comedian? He walks out and he's sitting there with Johnny Carson, Bob Hope, and Dean Martin, and he says, did you ever feel like the world was a tuxedo and you were a pair of road shoes? <laughs> You know, that's sometimes how I feel oh, when, when I deal with gosh. these people. So, I mean, because they're really wonderful. They, they really are. So, as a result of doing this stuff, Aaron Priest, we all know Aaron. If we don't know Aaron, he's, she's running for the late bill. Yeah, yeah. Um, late, late last summer, she said, I got to contact this guy because they're looking for somebody. So, I contacted him and I got, uh, it was a Giffords organization. They asked me if I would film a commercial to help elect Angie Craig, <laughs> okay? And I said, they said, do you mind mentioning Jason Lewis's name? And I said, no, I'll mention it. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll mention it. Did they specify <laughs> what words you had to use around his name? <laughs> and I, so I did that, and as a result of that, I got attached to the Giffords organization, and uh, they asked me if I would, um, since I was a gun owner, would I organize gun owners? I said, I don't know any gun owners. <laughs> well, I did. There's Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Bob. And there may be others here which we would want to talk to you because. Or your husbands or your better. Yeah. yeah. Early, early uh, late spring, we launched Minnesota Gun Owners for Safety through the Giffords Group. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And it was Gabby Giffords came in to help us launch. And wouldn't you know it, that that's the day that they came out with the Mueller report. So all the oxygen got oh, <laughs> taken out. No. But three states, um, Colorado did it before us. They had problems with it. We did it. It went very well. So they went to Texas and they got Texas organized. They were going to organize state by state mm -hmm. based on the legislatures. They liked how it went so well here in Minnesota that they were going to go national with it. And uh, it'll be six or seven months down the road, but this is going to go national. So it'll be gun owners for safety, and uh, we'll be all part of it. So uh, anyway, somebody said you wanted one of these. Yes. That ugly guy over there. Is <laughs> um, I'm Czech. My um, my mom's family's from Prague. Oh, really? Yeah, my dad's from, family's from uh, Slovakia. So. Uh -huh. Where are you from? I'm from Korean, which is like 40 minutes from Prague. Okay. Very close. I would say Akasamate, is that where you Akasamate, yes, how are okay. you? Yes. Pivo. I know Pivo. So last month, I got asked to attend the Democratic Forum. Um, gun violence. So all the candidates were there. And it was very interesting to hear them. They came out one by one. They were out for about 30 minutes. And I got to him. I got to ask Elizabeth Warren a question, mm -hmm. which is neat. And I got to meet her afterwards, which was also nice. And I got to meet Amy. Um, but that night, there were four of us that came from Minnesota. And we're sitting there and we're just having dinner with all these Giffords people. And they were people who were at the shooting. Mm -hmm. Okay? They were at the shooting. Some of them were shot themselves. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking, why am I doing this? I know why I'm doing this, because Mary Reed came up. And I met Mary in Washington, D.C., because she also does work for every town. And I didn't realize that she was at the Gifford shooting at the time. I think somebody told me, but you know, you meet so many people. Mm -hmm. And she told me the story about, she was there with her daughter. She was there with her daughter. She says, this is the daughter that she saved. Mm -hmm. When the shooting started at Giffords, she laid on top of her daughter. Mm -hmm. And somebody came up. And the guy, the shooter, came up and shot her in the shoulder. 
and she was trying to protect, he, he was, according to Mary, he was trying to shoot her daughter in her head. Oh. And so she kept protecting him. He, the other shoulder got shot. And she just decided, if he's going to shoot me, he's going to look in my face. And she turned around and looked right at him, and he couldn't shoot her. He shot her in the back. She has got bullets in her back to this day. And she does all this stuff, too. And that's one reason I do it. Deandra Yates was the girl who in um, Des Moines, I think, when they had the Every Town and Moms uh, uh, forum there with the candidates. I think Deandra Yates was the girl that was up there. And, and her son, and I got to meet Deandra several years ago, her 12th birthday party in her house. A bullet comes through the window, hits her son in the head, and he's a paraplegic for the rest of his life, or quadriplegic. I mean, her life was just changed just because she had a birthday party in her house. I mean, and she has to function like this every day dealing with that. But, but the one that really tore at me was this Carolyn Tuft. And her, she had two daughters, and one day she went to the uh, trolley mall in Salt Lake City, and it was a beautiful day, and she described the day and how nice it was, and, and she brought one of her daughters with, and they had to get back for the other daughter later on. But the store they went into, some guy comes in with a shotgun and starts shooting people. They both got shot, and they're both laying there, and they're, they're still, they're still uh, alive. But this Carolyn watched this guy come up and put the shotgun to her daughter's head and blew her head away. And she's just laying there thinking, I can't get home to my daughter. I gotta get my other daughter. And she's watching the telephone, her, her other daughter's telephone floating in blood towards her. I mean, that girl, this Carolyn, is dying of blood poisoning every day because she's got so many pellets in her back and she has to take all this medication just to get up in the morning and, and wake up, and she's slowly dying by blood poisoning. I mean, because they can't get the, the stuff out. Whereas that's what I asked Mary Reed. I said she had a, there was it wasn't lead. Whatever the bullets were, it wasn't lead. So she said she's lucky because uh, you know that's it. So anyway, this is why I do this, and this is why it's really important for for you to be here. And whatever you can do, any grassroots support. We busted our butts last year to get Jason Lewis out of office and Angie yeah. Craig into yeah. office. Yeah. And we're going to do it again, yeah. and we'll continue to do it. Okay? We're going to get Aaron Preeson. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever is um, Jessica uh, Hansen is going to run for Hunter's seat because Hunter's not going to run anymore. And Kayla Berg is going to run for um, um, Elisa's seat. Who's running against Dan Hall? Um, that is going well. There's two people there, right? yeah. and but we want the support, <laughs> and we got to keep all the great people that we got in. Well, so yeah. I'm all about Ruth Richards. Yeah. Yeah. So, Lindsay Port is good, but this Robert Timmerman is also very good. So you know they're going to have to you know go through the process to find out who's going to represent the you know the gun sense side. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's it, and please see me afterwards. Mm -hmm.